Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be converting it to a tubeless setup. Now the reason I'm doing that is because um, I had to drop down the air pressure on my last ride in order to get more traction in the mud. And when I did that I got a pinch flat. So it just seems like the natural next step to try and improve traction and reliability. So I'm going to take the time to just kind of examine what caused this flat. Now initially I just assumed that it was a pinch flat and um, while that may still have happened at some point since I was going over some rough terrain pretty fast with a flat tire the most obvious failure here is right there. Now the, re the reason I think this happened is low pressure in addition to water getting inside the rim allowed the tire to slip around the rim and with that slippage since the electric motor you know has so much torque the, the rim is moving faster than the tire moves when you get that slippage it starts pulling the the, um, the tube away from the valve stem and it ripped it off. Uh, i tell you guys the differences in valves you can get. The Suron comes with a Schrader valve and a lot of mountain bikers will switch to a Presta valve especially when going tubeless and the reason they do that is mountain bikers like to pedal up the hill with 30 psi in their tires let's say and they want to be able to drop the pressure down to I don't know maybe 20 or 18 while going downhill to get more traction. Now there's not really any reason for me to do that on a Suron because I do the whole ride at the same tire pressure and the Schrader valve um, works better with an air compressor. Most air compressors can't even fill up Presta valves unless you have the right attachments but it's just a lot more sturdy. Um, I've had multiple Presta valves break on me so wh while I did run those on my mountain bike um, there's really no benefit to on the Suron, so I would just recommend going with a good tubeless Schrader valve. It's time to move on to step one of the tubeless setup. First, you want to make sure there's no dirt or anything that's going to affect um, adhesion or the seal uh, when we go to tape the inside of this room up. So I'm going to use Brake Clean. I'm sure you could use just any sort of cleaner and rag. Um, but the reason I chose brake clean is because it evaporates quickly and it does a very good job. So I'm just going to spray it on the rag. I'm inside so I don't want to get too crazy here. Alright, so it basically evaporates instantly. So I don't really need to wait for this to dry. Might try and peel that off though. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because in order to make sure the, the sealant doesn't get through the spoke holes in here, you have to tape over it. And of course, if you're applying adhesive, you want it to have a good grip. There is like tubeless specific like rim tape that you can buy of various sizes. Um, and it's actually kind of a gimmick. Um, I have a friend that works, you know, at a, at a, at a bicycle shop in the city and the pro tip is really just to use Gorilla Tape. It's more durable, it's thicker, it has better adhesion, and uh, you can find it a lot easier than like specific rim tape. I think rim tape's like 15 or 20 bucks for a small roll on online or something, but you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever is closest to you and get a pretty massive roll of Gorilla Tape that you can use for anything. I would recommend going with this. Uh, the downside to the Gorilla Tape is that it leaves residue, but I don't plan on ever taking uh, the tape off and it's not something that is really prone to failure. So I'm just going to be using Gorilla Tape and you can choose to do what you wish with that information. So. I tried doing this myself, uh, I haven't done this before, and uh, as you can see there's a lot of air bubbles here which isn't good enough. So I call up my professional uh, bike mechanic friend Nick and he's going to show us the right technique. So first thing we're going to do is pull off this old shitty tape. 
So what I'm gonna do is section off this uh, roll of Gorilla Tape to try and match the width of the rim bed as best I can. So we're just laying the tape up here, kind of get an idea of where we need to break it. And just kind of double check, see if it lays in all right. Looks like this is gonna work well. And the key to taping these rims is uh, when you're applying the tape, you wanna make sure and stretch it as best you can as you put the tape on. So we're gonna start about halfway around the rim from the valve hole. Get it stuck on there. And then really tension the tape as you lay it down. And what you want is about, I don't know, six or nine inch overlap across from the valve hole of the tape. So we've got our rim taped up. Next thing I'm gonna do is use a piece of plastic, I'm just using a ballpoint pen, to press in the corners here and make sure the tape is fully seated. Looks so much better than when I did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the key, you really gotta freaking romp on that shit. Yeah. Did you see how I slipped a six or nine inch of overlap in there? <laughs> <laughs> is where the valve stem hole is. So you're just gonna wanna make a little, little tiny X with the knife there. Just enough so you can uh, poke that valve stem through. Then take your valve stem, the ring off, and just shove that through the tape, like so. Put your O-ring on first, locking nut, Alright, and then you can put the cap on for now. Once your rim is completely sealed with tape and you have your tubeless valve stem installed, you're ready to put the tire back on. What you need to be careful about is not damaging the tape that you just put onto the rim. If you do nick it and you op open something up and break the seal, then your spoke holes are going to be exposed to air and sealant and you'll have to do the tape over again. So I got the tire on the rim now, and when you're not uh, working around the, a tube that's in there, it actually went on pretty easy, which is good news. Um, that being said, I was careful not to, to damage the tape, but I won't know if I <laughs> did a good enough job with that until I go to put air and sealant in it. So uh, hopefully it's good. Uh, if not, I guess we'll find out. Before putting air in your tire, you need to put the sealant in. I'm gonna be putting the sealant in through the valve stem here, and to do that, you need to remove the core. To do that, I'm gonna be using just, you know, a valve stem core removal tool. All right. Set that aside. To put the sealant in, there's a couple different methods you can do. One, if you didn't want to go through the valve stem at all, what you could do is before putting the tire on, just hold it up like this and dump a puddle of sealant into the bottom of the tube, or the tire. Now, I don't like it doing it that way because it's a mess, you lose a lot of sealant on the ground, you have to like try and you know, put the tire on while keeping one side of the tire down like that the whole side, it's not recommended. You can buy syringes that screw on and you can just, you know, mainline the sealant through the stem, but they cost a little bit more money and they really don't work any better than what I have right here. This is just uh, like $5 at REI, it's just a little two ounce bottle of tire sealant. So it's just a little two ounce bottle. It has just a little, you know, nozzle to squeeze in there. And then I also bought another bottle of uh, sealant. Now I'm just gonna save this tiny little guy once I use it and refill it every time I wanna squeeze some sealant into the tire. And it honestly works almost, it probably works better than a syringe. And it's pretty cheap. Um, so that's the route I decided to go. All right, so you just open it up, put the tire 
um, upright so that the valve stem is down at the bottom. So it takes a couple squeezes. It's kind of awkward holding it on the edge of a wobbly trash can, but that's all in there. Um, two ounces is uh, all you need, really. Uh, you can put a little bit more in there. This is this is sealant that typically you use on like a mountain bike or something. So, you know, it probably wouldn't hurt to throw a little bit extra in there. So off camera, I put another uh, two ounces of sealant into the bottom of here just because it's a motorcycle tire and uh, I don't know how smoothly this uh, step of the process is going to go. So I wanted to make sure I didn't have to go back and put more in. Now I'm going to put the valve core back in so that doesn't need to be crazy tight but make sure it's in there. I'm going to take soapy water I'm just going to spray it kind of around the areas where the rim meets the tire and the reason I'm doing this is really only for lubrication I just want things to go together smoothly. And then I'm going to work sealant around. So you might lose some out of your tire here. It's okay. You can see it coming out. That's fine. It, knows you, it means you uh, mix it around good enough. And then I'm going to shove about 40 PSI into the tire. And hopefully it seats the bead. There's 20, 30, and that's 40. So now I'm going to bounce it around in place. Let the sealant do its job. So after bouncing it around a little bit more, the only place that I'm still getting sealant out is at the bottom of the valve stem. And it's stopped, and I'm not losing any air anymore but I think that that is because this Suron wheel has such a, a pretty high concavity on the inside of the rim here that uh, the o-ring doesn't quite get a good enough seal around here so it's working and it's fine but I think I over tightened it so the o-ring got squished out and it's not doing a very good job if you had a thicker o-ring or maybe two of them uh, I don't know, it might have uh, had less of an issue sealing, but I'm going to call that a success, and hopefully I don't have any issues when I go to ride it around. I want to cover some alternative options. The three main options to reduce flats that I personally considered before making my decision was a rim lock, a standard tubeless setup using tape and sealant, and then a tubeless 2.0 tire system. A rim lock will run you around 20 bucks and it locks the rim in place with friction. This prevents the valve from being torn away from the tube, which is how I got my most recent flat. The downside to a rim lock is that it does not eliminate the tube and requires drilling a hole in the rim. I decided to not go this route because it does not eliminate the risk of a pinch or puncture flat that comes with a tube, and you can't run any lower pressures. The next option, is the one that this video is on and it's just a basic tubeless setup. It will prevent pinch, puncture, and valve tear flats for about 30 bucks and you can run low pressure. The most expensive option and also the best option is a tubeless system. I will provide a link to their website so you can research how it works and where to buy it but essentially it prevents pinch flats, it locks the rim in place, and Running sealant is optional if you want to prevent puncture flats as well. It does all of this while protecting the rim 
and you can run as low as 10 psi of air pressure. The reason I didn't go this route is that it's $100 per wheel and probably overkill for a lot of people. All right, so another thing that's been kind of coming up on this bike is a really soft lever. If you don't quite want to bleed it just yet and you you don't want to put new pads in, um, zip tying the lever up real close and tight to the handlebar, letting it sit overnight can usually solve the problem at least for, for a couple of rides or so. So like I said, this is a band-aid. Uh, just let it sit overnight. If you got to ride the next morning and you don't want to take the time to um, bleed it, this is a good option. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Please consider hitting the like button as it helps us out. And if you would like to see more content like this in the future, please also consider subscribing to our channel. Thanks and have a nice day.